Well, good evening, Macedonia, and all of our Christian friends. It's such a blessing to come before you on Tuesday night for our Bible study time, and we praise God for each and every one of you, for those of you that are willing to study the Word of God for the purpose of His approval, study to show thyself approved, workmen who need not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of truth. That's our purpose. That's our the we, belief that we should, amen, study and learn and grow in the Word of God. So we thank you for being with us tonight. We do have one announcement that we would like to share with you. First of all, we will be having the funeral for Brother Nathaniel Knight. That is, the, he is the husband of our sister Josephine Knight, both our members here at Macedonia, and the funeral will be here. The wake will be at 10 a.m. Amen. That's the wake and viewing. That will be at 10 a.m. here at Mas in Macedonia Sanctuary, and immediately following um, at 11 o'clock will be the actual homegoing service for our Brother Knight. So we ask that you come. Please don't forget, you have to, you are required to wear a mask, and we are practicing safe distancing in our seating. So we ask that you come and you follow the direction of our ushers as they seat us, amen, and follow the, uh, the reserve signs, amen, to separate us so everybody would be safe. We want you to be safe, but we want to begin to bring open back up and this is not complete open up, but for funerals, we look forward to that. So please govern yourself accordingly and pray for the Knight family, if you would. Amen. As they, we celebrate the home going, all right? Amen. Bow with me in a word of prayer, if you would, please. God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and by the power of your Spirit, we come before your throne of mercy and grace and glorify you, Lord, for what you are doing and what you are going to do in, through this lesson within our lives, Lord. Bless us, Lord, that we will apply thy word into our everyday life, that we will be motivated, we will be stirred up, O oh God, to live for you. For you are that I am God. You are the God that is able to carry us through all of the circumstances and situations that befall us, O oh Father. We glorify you and praise you for this time that we study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, all right. We are looking at John chapter 11. We recognize that it is a pretty lengthy uh, chapter that John has written. And so we see in this, we have seen in this chapter that in the first of the 16th verses, this is uh, the entire chapter is about Lazarus' uh, death, if you would. And we found in the first 16 verses, it shares with us concerning Lazarus' sickness prior to him actually dying. And the death of Lazarus or the sickness that he befell him, amen. It was a lesson that Jesus Christ was teaching, amen, to those following him, amen, for those that were criticizing him, but especially for those who loved Christ and were willing to follow after him, all right? In that one, verses 1 through 16, for example, we see Christ not going when he first heard of Lazarus' sickness. Amen. He didn't respond to it at that time. He just waited, if you would. Now, we believe that the, the purpose that was fulfilled in this was that it was a time that Jesus knew, if nobody else knew, as Jesus as that teacher. He wanted to share with them that the purpose for the sickness of Lazarus and then his death was, was to be to glorify God and to proclaim Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Amen. Then we know that Jesus delayed because he had a work to do by the time that he, he would determine to go there. 
Amen. And when we talk of the Lazarus and Mary and Martha, we're talking about the love that Jesus had for them. Amen. And so the second purpose that uh, Jesus is giving unto us is that Jesus is showing his great love unto his those that he were close to, Mary and Martha. All right. Then the third purpose that Jesus Christ was going to use the death of Lazarus for is that to show not only those who were actually there, but a lesson for us in the historical way that there is an important point of waiting upon God, the necessity of waiting on God. Amen. Waiting for God to move on our time. This is a good time for us to wait and hold on for the Lord during this pandemic. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And so we learned how to wait. Amen. Until God works the action that he has. All right. They that wait upon the Lord. Amen. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. Say amen. Do you believe that tonight? Amen. The third purpose that we see for Lazarus' sickness and then his death, amen, found in the first uh, 16 verses, was that of, amen, taking advantage of the opportunity that you have, all right? Amen. We know that Jesus Christ in this situation, amen, was willing, all right, to use this opportunity in order that he could teach those who would be experiencing his coming in and his dealing with Mary Martha as well as with the death of Lazarus. Amen. That was an opportunity. We as Christians have to recognize that God places opportunities within our lives. And we have to be determined that the opportunity to glorify God, to magnify Him, to lift Him up, and to share Him with others is that time when they come into our lives and the Spirit speaks to us. Amen. We need to take advantage of those opportunities and allow God to use us in order to win souls for Christ. Amen. Then that was that fifth purpose that Jesus used. Amen. He was going to show his power over death. Amen. And we see it coming forth. We saw that. Amen. Uh, how Jesus was able then to use that situation. Then the sixth purpose that we see is that of strength. Jesus used the situation to strengthen his disciples. What actually had happened was that Jesus delayed, and then the disciples then, when Jesus said, let's go, the disciples said, well, we know that they want to kill you. Amen. And yet you want to go into, amen, Judea. You want to go into uh, Bethany where we know that they are trying to get you, but then they realized that Jesus was going to go, and they and they said, Thomas said, nevertheless, we want to go with you, and we're willing to die with you there. So they went with him. What a golden opportunity for them, the disciples, to strengthen their belief in Jesus Christ. Amen. Then that final purpose, number seven, was that purpose of stirring up Amen. The disciples' courage and their loyalty. That's what they did. Amen. They say, let us go with him. That we, it can, it can not just go with him, but we are willing to die, amen, with him on his behalf. Amen. And so we say, we see that taking place. Now, there was, if you would, the situation that it unfolded in that second portion of scripture from that uh, 16th, from that 17th verse, amen, we found that Jesus Christ, amen, was going, had decided to go into, amen, Bethany, and the first encounter that he had there in that 17th through the 27th verses was with Martha, amen. Martha, we saw in that portion of scripture that Jesus' encounter with Martha was a situation, if you would, that helped 
uh, uh, Martha to grow in her faith. Amen. For she, when she ran to see Jesus, Mary stayed at home, of course. Then Martha herself, amen, told Christ, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But nevertheless, Jesus used that situation in order to teach it, teach them, all right? And we saw in that portion of scripture that Martha had a limited faith. She recognized that Jesus, she believed that Jesus was and is that Savior. And yet her faith was limited for she tried, attempted to lock, amen, Jesus in to the fact, if you had been here, Jesus, we know, can do all things wherever he is or wherever he's not, all right? He don't need to be present in order to work miracles, all right? He's done it before. He did it again, amen, with the nobleman and his daughter. So we saw that as that, that situation for them. Martha not only had that limited faith, but she had a fundamental faith, we saw, for she did declare that Jesus, amen, was God, if you were, the Son of God. And in that 23rd verse, we find, amen, that Jesus told Martha in return that your brother shall rise again. And she said, I know that he shall, she, he shall rise again in the resurrection. So that shows that she believed that there is a resurrection of the body. That's that fundamental faith that we see in the scripture, that there is a day of rapture that's going to come. And then, so we need to have that fundamental kind of faith. But in, in addition to that, a growing faith. Amen. For in the in the final analysis, Martha declared faith in Jesus Christ, amen, that Jesus Christ, amen, is able to do all things, amen, as God directs her. And so we do see Martha declaring him as the Christ in verse 27, amen, declaring him as the Son of God in that same verse, and that God had sent him in order to carry out the work that he was doing. Amen. There is always a lesson to be learned as we study the word of God. That's why we study it so that we can learn, so that we can grow, so that we can sometimes test our faith. Uh, we have to recognize that if we all have faith, but we must increase that faith and mother, multiply within us. Amen. The faith that we have is able then to strengthen us, to be able to walk in the newness of life. Oh, I'm glad today that I have faith in the one that not only raised up Lazarus, but and declared himself to be the resurrection, but we have faith, I have faith in the God, Son of God, that died on the cross of Calvary for my behalf. Somebody ought to say hallelujah in here, for we recognize that the God is Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God, and much more because of that divine position that he has for God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So we praise him tonight. We glorify him because we are learning, amen, and gaining strength and power that we can be that disciple that follows after Jesus. Isn't that the truth? I want to be a, the one that can follow him. Where he goes, where he leads me, I will follow. What about you tonight? Do you believe that through your life and through your relationship with Jesus Christ, you can learn a number of things? Amen. There's always something to be learned as we study the Word of God. That brings us to this third portion of this 11th chapter of John. In verses 28 through 37. Amen. A portion of that scripture I'll read for you coming from verses 28 and 29. Amen. It says these words. And when she had so said, she went her way 
and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come and call it for thee. And as soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came unto him. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his word. Amen. If you will. We recognize in this portion of scripture, Jesus had the, um, in the previous portion, he had declared himself to be the resurrection. And Mary and Martha then, if you would, gleaned enough faith and power to believe that she became excited concerning Jesus Christ and what he and his ability, amen, and what he had shared with her. She learned of him. And so it was that when it when verse 28 says, and when she had so said, that is when she had declared Jesus as the Son of God, when she declared him as the Christ. Amen. She was so excited about it, we believe, that she got up and she went and called Mary her sister. Amen. And she did it secretly. We'll speak on that one as well. She called her saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. Amen. There we see the lesson. Amen that is taking place with Mary. Remember now, Martha, when she first heard, got the word that Jesus was coming, amen, that she ran to meet him. Jesus did not come all the way into Bethany, amen, but he stopped on the outskirts in a, a little town, a little area outside of Bethany, if you would. And so Martha ran to meet him. But Mary did not. Mary stayed in the house, if you would. And so after Martha had had her conversation and her dialogue with Jesus, after she had increased her faith and showed her willingness to believe in Christ, amen, then she ran, if you would, the, by the verse 28 says, and she called her sister Mary, and notice that they said secretly, amen, secretly saying the master is come and calleth thee. And now in this particular portion of scripture, verses 28 through verse 37, we are going to see the needs being fulfilled in Mary's life, amen. The needs that we recognize, every man, who every man, woman, boy, or girl, every Christian, every person that is born has basic needs, okay? And it seem and it is seen very clearly in Mary's conversation with Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we're gonna see five needs being fulfilled or carried out in this portion of scripture. And then, so now let's look at need number one in this. And the, the first need for mankind in this situation was the message of Christ. It was for Mary, the message of Christ, that was a need. She needed that in her life. Amen. But we can apply that into our lives. All oh, are you willing to say, I need the Lord? I need the one that died for my sins and trespasses as I go and come throughout this earth, as I allow God to live through me, as I realize that my life is nothing without Jesus Christ. I need him within my life. Amen. Verse 28 of, uh, says uh, unto us, amen. And when she so said, she went her way and called Mary secretly, amen, saying, the master is come and calleth thee, amen. Mary, uh, Martha had a message for Mary, if you would, amen. And that message was that the Lord Jesus Christ had come, amen. And so we see that that's exactly what Mary need in order to motivate her, amen, to get up and run quickly 
where the master was, okay? Amen. So that's the same thing that we as Christians need. We need that glorious message. Amen. That it motivated Mary to be able to go forward. Amen. And and see that Christ, amen, that her that that was their their friends, the one that is able then to do all things. Amen. That glorious message of Christ from Martha. A Martha's great confession of faith, amen, was the same one. He, verse 27 had said to us, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, which should come into the world, amen. We believe that it must have motivated hope within uh, Martha, amen. It must have fired her up after that conversation with Jesus, amen, because she carried that word unto Mary. Notice this about the message that Martha carried unto Mary, amen. Once Mary then came, she came running, if you would, quickly, amen, she responded, Amen. Saying, Amen. Notice what Martha said. The master is come, if you would. Amen. And he calleth thee. Thee. Amen. What a blessing. It. The same power, the same quickness, the same motivation that Mary, Amen, had. It came from recognizing that Jesus was calling her. Amen. Amen. We, we see that message coming unto her. Amen. Amen. Notice that Martha said, the master, amen, is the one that is calling her. The master then, master means an awful lot unto us. Amen. Amen. It's used oftentimes, it was used in slavery a lot. Oh, man, that the, the slaves had to refer to their owners as their master. But in this situation in the scripture, master means the teacher. Amen. The teacher. Jesus is not just another teacher, but they use the word for master is the teacher. Amen. As the teacher, there is none equal to him. He is the teacher, and he's able to teach above any other teacher. That was, one, that was the one thing that the Pharisees and the Sadducees recognized about Jesus was that he could teach. Amen. He, he was a great teacher. But the Bible said he is the teacher. There is none equal to, there is none, amen, above him. Amen. None like Jesus. Amen. Two things about that. He is the supreme teacher. Amen. The very best teacher, amen, that ever lived. Do you believe that today? There's none equal to him. Amen. He's known to all the world as the great teacher. No one can compare to him. He stands alone by himself. Not only that, but amen, Jesus is the master. Amen. As declared in verse 20, in, in verse 28. The master is come. Amen. And in so declaring him as the master, it's the same as being the Lord, if you would. It's the same as being the teacher to all mankind. Amen. Calling Jesus that, amen, we recognize him as being the Lord, his lordship and his deity, if you would. Amen. Jesus himself declared himself to be de deity. He says, ye call me master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so I am. That's in John 13 and 13. Amen. Amen. Not only that, but it continues on that in referring to him as master, we're recognizing that the Lord is able then, amen, to be the teacher that can lead and guide us, amen, in, into all truth, amen. Notice then that Luke declared these words, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and 
Christ. Christ as the coming Messiah. Lord as the Master, as the Supreme Teacher. Dr. Luke declared unto him. Dr. Luke goes a little further as well. He says, he hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. I tell you, when we recognize Jesus as being Lord, as being savior, amen, we have to see that God was exalting Jesus Christ, amen, exalting him so that he's declared to be the prince and the savior. The savior part is the coming part where he's going to give his life on our behalf. Glory to God. Amen. He is the one that is the only one that is able, amen, to forgive us of our sins and trespasses and to give repentance unto not only Israel, but he gives repentance to all of us as well. If we would just repent and come unto him, come back to him, he will in no wise Cast us out. Say hallelujah, somebody. Say thank you, somebody, that we have that kind of God, that kind of Jesus Christ, who is the master above all this. Amen. Paul declared this concerning Jesus Christ. He says, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Faithful? In the sense that God had promised to send, amen, the Messiah. And he is carrying out that when he gave us his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto fellowship. Christ coming unto the earth. Amen. Among all mankind, taking on the form of man, giving fellowship to those of us. Amen. That was in the Bible days. Amen. And even now we have fellowship through the Holy Spirit that he gave unto us before he left going back to heaven. Oh, what a blessing that we know that Paul was faithful in his walk with God. Amen. And so he says, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord by, but by the Holy Ghost. What we're saying to you is that you must be born again. You must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. We believe that that's what Jesus Christ is requiring of us, that we no longer recognize who we are, but we recognize, amen, as our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. And so we see that need for that, amen, for that testimony, amen, that Martha had and gave unto Mary. Then we look a little further in verses 29 and 30, amen. We see the second need. Amen. That is that is taken care of. Amen. Through the death, through this situation. Amen. With Mary, if you would. Then 29 and 30 it says, as soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came unto him. Amen. Notice that. Amen. She heard of Jesus and she did not delay. She heard it. All right. Now, we another aspect of this that we have to keep in mind is that Mary and Martha was, were in their home um, and Lazarus had died. And so all the press, the people, those loved ones, amen, who came to console, amen, uh, Mary and Martha concerning the death of their brother, amen, these people had come amen, to their home, and they were mourning with them, amen. And so we see that Mary, if you would, she quietly or secretly, once she heard of Jesus Christ, she rose quickly, and she ran to him, amen. And, and so being quick in her response, 
Amen. We believe that, or can you picture in your spiritual mind that she said, Jesus calling me? And so she immediately responds, all right, and she goes quickly, amen, unto him, arising. Don't you believe that that's what we need to be aware of and conscious of? We need to always be mindful that when the Spirit speaks to us, when Jesus calls on us, when Jesus tells us the things that we need to do through the Spirit, amen, is that our response should not be delayed. It says, when you hear the word of God, harden not your heart, but respond unto him. Amen. Just as Mary responded, she came, she arose and came quickly and ran unto him. Mary had that hope and that expectation, amen, that stirred her up on the inside. Somebody say, stir me up, Lord. Amen. Touch my heart. Strengthen my mind. Give me that courage and that power to be able to, when you speak to me, I will, will respond in your power. I will have the hope because my hope is built on Christ Jesus. Amen. And I expect the blessings to flow just as Mary did. Amen. Notice that it says secretly. Amen. That means that Martha told Mary that Jesus was calling her, and he told Mary in a secret voice with all the people around, amen. Martha whispered unto Mary. How do we know that it was a whisper? Because the Bible says that, and you'll see that when Mary then quickly ran, the people who were in there, the mourners and so forth, they, they made a misunderstanding. They thought that Mary was going, if you would, to the graveside when Lazarus was, was, was buried. Amen. And so they said, amen, she goes to the grave in order to moan. Let's go with her, if you would. Amen. So they didn't understand what was happening because Martha told her secretly, quietly. Amen. No matter how quiet it was, we have to understand that the message when it's proclaimed, we ought to respond. Amen. No matter how secretly it's said, but when the word of God pierces our mind and heart, we need to do like David says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. Man needs to respond just as, as Mary responded. Amen. That is the name that is given, that is a need that is given unto mankind. Then the third need that we see, we see in this portion of scripture, is the need that man reaches out uh, through other people and help other people. When, Ma when Mary rose up and went out, then all those who were inside, amen, they got up and went, went with her. It's good to have some help. Isn't that the truth? You know, death is an experience that brings gloom. Death is an experience that brings sadness. No matter how strong a Christian you are, amen, there's still when your child or your husband or your wife or your family member, amen, and it goes into death, we have to recognize that we need to help those who are still alive. We need to be a blessing unto them, amen. We need to reach out to them. People need to help them, give, show them that love and support. Isn't that the truth? I know that is right, amen. And so we need to show that same kind of love in terms of the need. There is a need for us to show affection and love for those who are in mourning. Oh, we move a little further and we see that fourth need. That is a confession of faith. Amen. Even though it may be limited or even though it may be a weak testimony. Amen. That confession of faith is found in us in verse 32. It says, then when Mary was come where Jesus was 
and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Okay, what we see in this portion of scripture here is that there is a time, amen, for those of us who believe in Christ to make that confession of faith. There is a time when we are allowing God to live through us that we can confess him. Our response should be one, amen, of expression of faith. We notice that Mary did something as similar to what uh, Martha had, then, had done. Amen. We find that she said, if thou had been here, amen, all right, my brother would not have died, amen. When she came, she not only came and fell down at his feet, that was a sign, if you would, of her relationship, her commitment, if you would, at, uh, to Jesus Christ, amen. We have to recognize that as children of God, we are to allow ourselves, amen, to worship God. Amen. We should be able to do what Mary did. Amen. She made that confession of faith, but she said, if you had been here, same situation. But we recognize that God, Christ Jesus, don't have to be present in order to work a miracle in their situation. And so we see that Jesus is working that miracle through this fourth need. There is a need for that confession of faith. There is a need that she show forth, amen, her commitment unto the Lord. Notice that she called him Lord, okay? As Lord then, we recognize that that is a, res a title of respect, if you would, all right? Notice that Lord means master, just as master means Lord when used in the Bible. Lord means owner, amen. And so Jesus was called Lord, amen, all throughout his ministry uh, on earth. He even called himself Lord, amen, recognizing that respect that was given unto him. The Roman Empire, if you would, would officially recognize their emperor by calling him Lord, all right? Genesis, Genesis uses the word Lord oftentimes in, in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew. The Hebrew title for Lord, if you would, is Adonai, all right? Adonai, and it is translated Lord, amen, in the book of Genesis. And it also is translated Jehovah, amen. Jehovah is another word that's used for Lord. And so we see that Jesus called himself, amen, God called himself Lord at one time for his deity. And he also referred to God the Father as Lord as well. Amen. Jesus is recognizing himself as Lord. Amen. And when Jesus is called Lord, it means that he is master. That means that he is the owner. That means that he is king of king and Lord of Lord. He is the only true God. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Well, he's saying unto him that I am Jehovah. Amen. I am Adonai. Amen. And I should and will be recognized, amen, as being a part of what God is doing. Amen. There is a portion of scripture that says these words unto us. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring, ye are to support the weak and to remember, amen, those others, amen, who are less fortunate than we are. It is more blessed to give than to receive. That's Acts 20 and 35. 
what happens in this portion of scripture deals with the situation with those that came, amen, to give that love and support for Mary and Martha. And so we glean from that, amen, that we need to help one another, amen. We need to help each other. And that's what these portions of scripture say is, amen. Romans says this in Romans 15 and 1. We then are strong, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Are you helping someone else? Are you showing your love and mercy that God has shown unto us? Amen. Are you looking at other friends and neighbors and helping them along the way? Amen. Christ, we recognize, if you would, was that kind of person. He gave himself. He was willing to do all that he needed to be done. All right. And so when that confession of faith was given, she called him Lord. Uh, then she expressed, however, amen, that limited faith, amen. Man needs ears to make genuine confessions of faith, amen, not weak, amen. We know that when we become Christians, we may be weak in our knowledge and understanding, but we, we should recognize that there is a growing time in each and every one of our lives, all right, that we are willing to grow and allow God to use us. Amen. He says, therefore, shall ye shall confess before men. Him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. That comes from Matthew chapter 10 and verse 32. Amen. Where we see the encouragement, amen, of growing and allowing, amen, ourselves to not only just confess Christ, but growing in Christ. Amen. He tells us, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We have to confess him just as Mary confessed him as being Lord. We have to be willing then to glorify him in all of our ways. Amen. Tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Confess your belief in him. Amen. The Bible says that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. How often do you mention God to someone else? How often do you confess that who your life is? Are you ashamed, amen, of telling others about the goodness of the Lord? Are there certain people that you confess Christ around and others you be silent and don't even say things? We need to be willing to confess Christ to all those in and around us. Amen. That we glorify him, that we allow him to live within us and allow him to direct our path. Now, there is another aspect, amen, of the needs that go forward. That fifth need that we see Jesus, amen, taking advantage of the situation, taking uh, advantage of an opportunity, amen, to glorify himself and also to help Mary to gain, to gain even the more strength. Notice, if you would, verse 33 through verse 36. It says, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have ye laid him? Amen. They said unto him, Lord, come and see. 
And verse 35, Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, behold, how he loved them. Amen. That's the beauty of that, that particular portion of scripture. Amen. Is not only did Mary recognize that Jesus wept as she was weeping. Amen. And the people were re weeping. We can see in this portion of scripture that Jesus wept. We know that that is what the shortest scripture, verse of scripture that we have in, in the Bible. That, that two words in verse 35. But in this share, in, in this portion of scripture, we see Jesus groaning in the spirit. Now, some say he was groaning because he saw Mary and all the other people wailing and crying around them. And so he was mad, if you were, Jesus. And so he groaned in that sense. But most theologians, and I I'm, have a tendency to believe this version of it, is that Jesus Christ was looking upon Mary weeping and he could feel Amen. Her weeping. He could feel her burden as this is her brother that has gone on. All right. That has died. And so Jesus groaned in the spirit as well. Amen. How often do we, when we go to funerals, amen, or when we find out that someone else has passed on, amen, we groan in the spirit. When we see others crying, we too feel their compassion. Feel their hurt, if you would. Feel their need, amen, to be touched by those who can encourage them, amen. Because we know that Mary certainly was in sorrow because she was weeping. And Jesus was able then to weep with her as well as with those other, uh, other believers and non-believers, amen, who came, amen, to comfort her. And to give her strength. Oh, isn't it a blessing to be able, if you would, to know that Jesus, that same Jesus Christ, is more than willing, if you would, to groan with us. He knows our every need. Amen. He knows that we who are trusting in God and believing in God are able then to feel that same burden. That's why Christ came, if you would. He came that we could have life and have it more abundantly. We know that sin and death seems to separate us, amen, and make us feel as though, amen, we're, we're losing our lo loved ones, even though if they accept Christ, they are, bit, are with the Lord, all right? We have to recognize that we should continue to serve God. Amen. Notice, if you would, that after Jesus had wept, the Bible says, Then he then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. Amen. And so with that in mind, we can be an example, if you would, for others to see the love of Christ within them. Even though some of these people that were mourning and crying and wailing, amen, had not accepted Christ. Probably some was there just in order to find a way of taking Jesus captive, amen. But those who were willing, if you would, to serve the Lord, recognized that same love of Christ within them, amen. Jesus then asked them, where have ye laid him. Amen. And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Now, he asked the question, where have they laid him? We know that Jesus is omniscient. Amen. All knowing. Amen. In all of his ways. So don't get the idea that Jesus did not know. Amen. Where Lazarus was, was buried. Some says that he asked the question, Amen. In order for the people around them, amen, could break away from their wailing and so forth and focus in on the situation as it was unfolding before them. Jesus was 
preparing himself, amen, to perform the miracle that he was making, he was going to make, and that is to raise Lazarus from the dead. But up to this point, amen, after Jesus had wept, amen, amen, we know that all of this took place, and he says, where have ye laid him? Others say that he asked the question in order, amen, for them to not feel as though when he resurrected, when he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, the people wouldn't say, uh-huh, they are conspiring. He and Lazarus planned this thing that way. Amen. That's a possibility, but we know that Jesus has all knowledge and understanding is the point that we want to reiterate unto you. Amen. And so they told him to come and see. Jesus then came and he saw. Amen. Then the Jews then. Amen. Some of them could not. Some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died. We see in this portion of scripture the misunderstanding, amen, of mankind, amen, when they refuse to accept Christ as their personal Savior. We know that there were those who believed who was in the house and that was there to comfort Mary and Martha. And there was also there those who who were seeking to kill and destroy Jesus Christ. Amen. And so those people would not, amen, have that spiritual ability in order for them to see what Jesus Christ, amen, was saying and what Jesus Christ was preparing himself to do. We need to recognize that there are many, amen, who need to meet Christ, amen. There are many who have needs and necessities, but they refuse, if you would, to accept Christ as their personal Savior. The more he invites them to come, the more they refuse to come. Just, just like Mary, when, when Martha told her that Jesus is come, amen, she ran to see him. Amen. We have to recognize that we have troubles and trials in our lives, but Christ have come to meet our every need. We have sorrow and hurt, just as Mary and Martha, but Jesus came down from heaven in order to meet our needs, amen, in order to remove the hurt that we feel sometimes. Sometimes we get a little lonely down here. We feel emptiness down here. But we know that Jesus is able to feel us, amen, with his goodness. Amen. He's a company keeper, if you would. Amen. He's that promised us already that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, but he'll be with us always. Amen. Matthew says this, that even as the Son of Man came, not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus ministered unto them, but the ultimate was yet to come. All right. He had a greater ministry to come to them. Amen. And so we recognize that death is one of those things that was to take place. And we know Lazarus' resurrection is also to come, amen, in a few minutes, in, 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 a, in a more, another time. Amen. Amen. Dr. Luke gives us this word in Luke 14, verse 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance unto the captive, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Jesus' words in sharing with us. Amen. When the Spirit of God 
amen, fell upon him when he came down. Well, the spirit was with him at all times. But as he, amen, shared with them, he shares with them, amen, that this is that acceptable time, amen, to accept what Christ have done. He healed the brokenhearted, amen. He preached deliverance, amen, to those who are captive. He set us free. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. He removed the chains that bound us up, amen. He healed those who were blind during that time period, amen. And we believe that his coming, amen, was to give life unto all that would receive him. I come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The master is come for us. Amen. He's calling on us. Amen. He wants you and he wants me. Amen. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Are you heavy laden today? Are you laboring? Amen. With your own understanding, it's time to get the right understanding. And that is to receive Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. Don't be as those unbelievers who said that he could heal all the others, but he could not, amen, heal Lazarus, if you would. Amen. That's the, the way that the earth or the world would think. Amen. But we know that everything that Jesus does is done in his time, according to his will, according to the direction of his father. And we as children of God need to stand tall and know that Jesus Christ came for our, our purpose, and that is to die on that old rugged cross. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that his coming was to save us as sinners, amen, from all of our sins and trespasses? He came to separate, amen, us from the world. That's so much so when Paul says, what, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, perils, or sword. Amen. We know what he says. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. We believe that, that Jesus Christ is answering our needs. We believe that the message of Christ is clear, that he's come. We believe that our response is that we need to get in a hurry when we hear the word of God. When you hear the word, harden not your heart. We need, amen, to work the work that Jesus, amen, encourages us to do when he calls us. That's to help one another. We need to be strong in our confession of faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We need the understanding, the feeling, and compassion that Jesus had for Mary and Martha, and he still has that same compassion today for all those who are willing to accept him as their personal Savior. Are you willing today to accept him? Accept him into your life. If you have not, we believe that you need to repent and ask God to forgive you of your sins and trespasses and confess that you desire to serve him. Amen. You desire, amen, to recognize him as Lord of Lord and King of King. Are you willing to accept him this day? As he stated, we need, you need to confess it. Confess him and he should in no wise cast you out. He will come in and sup with you and he sup with you and you with him as well. Receive him today into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Confess that you are a sinner and you need his salvation. And if you would do so, salvation is yours this very moment. Pray, pray amen, with me this prayer of faith. Lord, we thank you for individuals that are willing to confess you as their personal Savior. 
go come into their lives, Lord. Receive them as becoming believers in you, Lord Jesus. As they confess you as their personal Savior, forgive them of their sins and trespasses and receive them into eternal life. Well, God bless you and may he keep you is our prayer. Please don't forget that there is another step in terms of with your salvation. And that is that you be baptized into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three. Amen. Christ com commands us to go and baptize those who are willing to confess and receive him. Amen. Thank God for you, for your confession. Know that you can go to a church that may be open, but we believe that soon and very soon we will be reopened and we will be more than happy to receive you and baptize you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you and may he keep you is our prayer. Good night.